Welcome to the Weekly Bat. Welcome to the Weekly Bat for the week of May 16th to May 22nd. Starting off the week with highlights from a recent guest AMA we had with Justin Wilkenfeld, Susie Wilkenfeld, and Dan I. Sack from Kind Humans, which is a cause on a mission to make kindness a viral phenomenon. Here's a bit from our highlights blog post. Welcome to the next installment in our series of Bat Community Run AMAs. The ongoing series on Reddit features various guests from the Bat and Brave teams, and now, guests from projects and causes that Brave collaborates with. The most recent AMA took place on May 13th and featured guests Justin Hoost Wilkenfeld, who's the CEO and co-founder, Susie Wilkenfeld, president and co-founder, and Dan I. Sack, who is the director of business operations from Kind Humans. As mentioned earlier, a cause on a mission to make kindness a viral phenomenon and to unite and grow the community of Kind Humans around the world. The trio fielded both pre-submitted and live questions from Redditors about the work Kind Humans is doing to help people and the environment. This includes their Kindness Pass It On sticker campaign, where every sticker pack purchased funds a tangible act of kindness, such as planting trees or providing safe drinking water. The Kind Humans Shop, which encourages consumers to purchase with purpose and features curated, sustainably focused products. And their work with Grassroots Aid Partnership, GAP, which sends much-needed supplies to communities most impacted by COVID-19. Up next, we have another piece from the Brave blog. This one is titled, Industry Discussion of the GDPR at Two Years Old, and Future EU Regulatory Development. So embedded in the post here is actually a video discussion led by Brave's Dr. Johnny Ryan, who is our Chief of Policy. Senior representatives of advertisers, publishers, and intermediaries discuss two years of the GDPR in a discussion hosted by Brave, or Johnny. The participants include Dr. Johnny Ryan, of course, Brave's Chief Policy Officer, Catherine Armitage, Director of Digital Policy at the World Federation of Advertisers, Connor Murray, who is the Director of Regulatory and Public Affairs at EGTA, and Mathilde Fiquet, who is the Director General at FEDMA. The discussion covers the impacts of the GDPR so far and issues beyond it, including competition, content regulation, and other future policy issues that may dominate in the next two years. Up next, more news from the Brave blog this week. Brave's new Anti-Fingerprinting Defenses 2.0. This is the fourth in an ongoing regular series of blog posts describing new privacy-related features in Brave. This post describes work done by senior software engineer Mark Pilgrim, senior privacy researcher Peter Snyder, principal engineer Brian Johnson, and chief scientist Ben Livschitz. The TLDR. Brave is redesigning its browser fingerprinting defenses to build on the randomization-based techniques discussed in the previous post. These new defenses provide stronger and more web-compatible protections by default. For users who are willing to accept some broken sites for further privacy, they can opt into an even stronger set of defenses. The system is currently being developed though, but parts of it can be used today in our nightly builds. Brave's goal is to both be the best browser for protecting your privacy and the best browser for day-to-day full-featured web use. With that in mind, this post will cover past generation fingerprinting defenses, as well as Brave's new fingerprinting defense system, Farbling, and will explore a possible future of fingerprinting protections in Brave. Up next, If you're following the Bat Project on Reddit and you've been paying attention, you already know that Verizon has included Brave in its Pay It Forward Live campaign to support local and small businesses. This week, Brave began participating in the Verizon Pay It Forward Live campaign. Pay It Forward Live is a weekly live stream starring the biggest names in entertainment supporting small businesses. You can visit Verizon's Twitter page for live performances every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. ET and 5 p.m. PT. You can tune in at any time to catch prior performances from artists like Chance the Rapper, Billie Eilish, Alicia Keys, and Usher, who performed this week. 
Verizon has chosen to feature Pay It Forward Live through sponsored images in Brave during select event dates and is promoting Brave ads ongoing for people to learn more, tweet support, and tune in and provide much needed support for local businesses. We encourage the community to learn more and to participate through Brave ads to show their support for the Pay It Forward Live campaign. Here's how. If you see a Pay It Forward Live ad notification in Brave, Click the ad and follow the steps to publish a tweet about the campaign using the hashtags PayItForwardLive and BeBrave. Our team will be tipping people who click to tweet the Brave ads and use the aforementioned hashtags to show support. In addition to tips, people that publish tweets about the Pay It Forward Live campaign that include the hashtags will be automatically eligible for daily official Bat and Brave merch kit giveaways. Okay, now in the accompanying blog post, there are a few very key links. So the first is there's a link to learn more about how Verizon's Pay It Forward Live program is working with Lisk.org to support small businesses. Okay, the second is there's a link to buy digital gift cards to support small businesses in your community. And then there is also a direct link to a pre-canned tweet that includes the event hashtags and that you can use to show your support for the Pay It Forward Live campaign on Twitter. And if you tweet that, you will automatically become eligible to win Bat and Brave merch in the daily giveaways. Also, I forgot to mention, you can customize the tweet as well. It comes pre-canned, but you can customize it to add whatever you want. As long as it includes the Pay It Forward Live and Be Brave hashtags, you will be eligible for the giveaways. So there's really no excuse not to participate. Even if you're outside of the US and you won't see the Pay It Forward Live ads, you can still use the pre-canned tweet that we've set up for you to spread awareness on Twitter. Everybody needs to get involved here because everybody knows at least one small local business that they absolutely love. And I want you to think about them as you're tweeting about this campaign. Think about the joy they bring to your own life as well as the value they add to your community. So let's do it, guys. Do it with me. Let's make some noise for small businesses. Up next, I wanted to let you know about a little tutorial that Chris Cat made this week. It's an easy step-by-step guide about connecting your Reddit community points or Reddit vault with Brave's native crypto wallet. Chris has generously included screenshots to help you along too. Up next, Des Martin, Brave's head of marketing, shared a picture of Brave featured in Ireland's Business Post. The Business Post is a paper newspaper, a print publication. Remember those? Very exciting. The Business Post is also the home of quality independent journalism with award-winning comment and analysis. I should also mention that beyond sharing a picture of the article, Des was also interviewed for the article. And the article was titled, Brave Challenger to Google flips the dynamic to put the user first. This week in Sponsored Images. This week, find images promoting Verizon's Pay It Forward Live campaign, as well as images from BlockFi, Upland, Tezos, and Orange in Brave's new tab page. These brands join a growing list of sponsors that includes Newegg, Western Digital, Khan Academy, BlockFi, Crypto.com, and eToro. Brave Creator Spotlight in partnership with Everipedia. Our first featured creator of the week is Matt Christensen, YouTuber and podcaster. Matt enjoys talking politics and culture from the refuge of a wilderness fortress in Bosman, Montana. He organizes online group hangouts and real life meetups for his over 200,000 subscribers and even encourages his supporters to take part in his show by phoning in questions. The next featured creator of the week is Josh Jepson, YouTuber and Twitch streamer. Josh is best known for his gameplays of Banjo-Kazooie, Mario, Zelda, Portal, Fallout, Animal Crossing, New Horizons, and more. Josh actively encourages his YouTube and Twitch community members to be welcoming and open-minded and honest and to treat everyone with respect. And that's a policy we can get behind. Also, fun fact that no one asked for, Banjo-Kazooie was my favorite N64 game as a kid. You can find links to both featured creators' channels as well as to their Everipedia entries in the Weekly Bat blog post. Client Updates 
This week, the Desktop Dev Channel progressed to version 1.10.68, the Desktop Beta Channel jumped to version 1.10.67, the Desktop Release Channel progressed to version 1.9.72, the Android Release Channel jumped to version 1.9.74, the Android Beta Channel progressed to version 1.9.75, and Brave for iOS jumped to version 1.16.2. Please remember to keep your Brave browser updated to the latest version at all times. This will allow you to stay ahead of bugs and benefit from all the latest updates and fixes. If you don't know how to update your browser, here's what you do. On desktop, go to brave colon slash slash help. And on mobile, if you don't receive updates automatically, you can manually update your Brave browser from your app store. Brave team tweets. Brandon Ike simply tweets, extensions coming to Brave for Android. To which one of our Android engineers, Sergey Zukovsky, replies, yes, we are targeting end of June, and that's a working prototype. Brave Samson tweets, I added a bat purchase of 161k tokens to brave.com slash transparency, bringing the total purchase this month to around 535,000 tokens. These tokens ultimately find their way back to Brave users. Head over to brave.com slash brave dash rewards, opt into Brave ads, and get rewarded for your attention. Samson also tweeted, Nice to see Tezos and CoinList adorning the Brave new tab page. Be sure to check out their upcoming hackathon, which is offering $25,000 in prizes. More information online at coinlist.co slash build slash Tezos slash Brave. Tezos is spelt T-E-Z-O-S. Senior security engineer at Brave, François Marier, tweets an FYI. If you include any third-party scripts on your site, anything you put in the query string will be shared broadly and without user consent. The tweet links out to a Medium post titled, The 2020 URL Query String Data Leaks. Millions of user emails leaking from popular websites to advertising and analytics companies. Brave CISO Yan Zhu retweeted Francois's tweet and added, If your site requests any third-party resources, either you need to ensure no personal data slash tokens are ever in the URL or set a non-default referrer policy to make sure you're not leaking user data to third parties. Bat and Brave in the news. This piece is by Euractive. EU data watchdog is, quote, very worried by Hungary's GDPR suspension. The European Data Protection Board, the EU's umbrella organization overseeing the application of EU data protection rules across the bloc, has voiced its concern over the suspension of EU data protection rights in Hungary. As part of the 2019 annual report published on Monday, the organization highlighted the importance of bolstering the EU's data protection clout by sufficient resource allocation. Jolinek told reporters on Monday that national data protection authorities across the EU, quote, must be funded appropriately, following a survey conducted by the board which found that most supervisory authorities, quote, stated that resources made available to them are insufficient. In this vein, a recent report from the web browser Brave suggests that data regulators across the block are woefully understaffed with insufficient resources. News you should know. This piece is from Business Insider. How to update your LastPass password manager on Google Chrome to get the latest, most secure version. Note, Brave offers support for nearly all extensions that are compatible with Chromium, including LastPass. In the Weekly Bat blog post, I've included a link to a guide on how to install extensions from the Chrome Web Store in Brave. Okay, back to the article. A LastPass account offers something invaluable for browsing Google Chrome, or Brave. Password security without having to memorize dozens of complex alphanumeric codes. The free service, which runs smoothly in the background as a Chrome extension, stores and encrypts passwords. All that's required for you is to create a master password. While it's savvy for Chrome or Brave users to use LastPass, they should also be mindful to keep the program updated. Using the newest version is paramount to the password manager's effectiveness since any security exploits will be patched in updates. There may also be cool new features to play with when you download the newer versions of LastPass. This piece is from Vice. 
Congress has no idea how much web browsing data the FBI collects. The Patriot Act is about to be reauthorized, but we still don't know basic facts about how our web browsing habits are being tracked. With Congress looking to renew the Patriot Act, privacy advocates are scrambling to reattach a provision that would prevent law enforcement agencies from collecting Americans' web histories without a warrant. But as usual, fighting the government's secretive spying powers means taking shots in the dark. For one, Congress doesn't even really know how much web browsing data federal agencies are collecting. On Thursday, Senator Ron Wyden, DOR, sent a letter to Acting Director of National Intelligence Richard Grinnell, asking whether the numbers disclosed in the government's annual transparency report include the collection of web browsing data and search history. The report includes the number of, quote, unique identifiers collected by federal agencies under Section 215 of the Patriot Act, which allows for domestic mass surveillance. But it's unclear how those identifiers might apply to the collection of web browsing data. Roaring fans. Doug Harper tweets, If you didn't know, Brave is the best. The Geek of Wall Street tweets, once again impressed by Brave's new tab page, this time for the Verizon Pay It Forward Live campaign. Hashtag be brave. My default Reddit 420 from Reddit writes, I just realized my favorite YouTubers are verified Brave content creators. Come check them out. They are called the Endless Adventure and they're travel vloggers. This person also writes, I don't watch a whole lot of YouTube, but these guys are really entertaining because they're super relatable and they just travel around the world staying in different Airbnbs and stuff. I've been watching them a lot lately because everything is shut down and I've been bored as bleep. I've been bored as heck. And then they share links to a few of their favorite videos and end by saying, okay, that's all. I was just excited to see that they are verified. And yes, we agree. That is very exciting. It's awesome to see your favorite creators become verified with Brave. That way you can actually support them actively with bat tips rather than through ads that compromise your privacy. That's a wrap for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you would like to read the full stories whose headlines we cover on the podcast, be sure to read the accompanying Weekly Bat blog post. You can find that on batcommunity.org always, or if you're listening on YouTube, check the description box below the video for a link, and if you're listening on a podcast app or player, check the show notes. Thank you for listening. If you like these podcasts, be sure to follow or subscribe to stay up to date with the Bat community.